Hey everyone, so today we are kicking off our brand new series called Esther. It's a story and a Bible written in the Old Testament and it's about a lady who's done so many awesome things that there's actually a whole book about her lifestyle. We're going to be looking at the awesome things that she did, some stories in this book. But before we do that, we're going to go into a time of worship and for the next five weeks we're going to be looking at Esther. So why don't we stand to our feet and let's do this. We've got to live it out, live it out, yeah, we've got to live it out, live it out, we've got to live it out, live it out, the fruit of the Spirit. Let me hear you say love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's got to come from deep down in your soul. I said love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's got to come from deep down in your soul. Because we're living a life filled by the Spirit. We're living a life in step with how He did it. We're living a life filled by the Spirit. to bless it's not for selfish reasons it's not to make us cool it's not to make us popular or be too cool for school it's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts god's given us to bless to bless all those around us to bless all those in need to bless those god has called us to whoever that might be it's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts god's given us to bless it's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. So, what exactly are these gifts? Let me tell you. But first, are you ready? There's prophecy. To prophesy. There's service. That could be my thing. There's teaching. Is that maybe me? Encouragement. Could be. There's also generosity hmm. and leading if you're called to it. But don't forget mercy. That too. And do it cheerfully. We get to show the whole world Jesus We get to be the body of Christ We get to shine His light around us And make this life we're living count We get to show the whole world Jesus We get to be the body of Christ We get to shine His light around us And make this life we're living count It's all about the gifts it's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's not for selfish reasons. It's not to make us cool. It's not to make us popular or be too cool for school. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. To bless all those around us. To bless all those in need. To bless those God has called us to whoever that might be. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts. It's all about the gifts God's given us to bless. Okay, I think I get it. Let's recap one more time. 
There's prophecy. There's service. There's teaching. Encouragement. There's also generosity and leading if you're called to it. But don't forget mercy. And do it cheerfully. We get to show the whole world Jesus. We get to be the body of Christ. We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count. We get to show the whole world Jesus. We get to be the body of Christ. We get to shine His light around us and make this life we're living count. There's prophecy. There's service. There's teaching. Encouragement. There's also generosity and leading if you're called to it. But don't forget mercy. And do it cheerfully. So has anyone here heard about Esther? Well, I'm going to give you a few facts so that you can get to know her a bit better. So first up, who was Esther? Esther was a Jewish girl. And where did Esther live? Esther lived in a place called Persia. And what was Esther's favorite food? Ah. Mm. Definitely pizza. Well, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Pizza's my favorite food, but um, I think if Esther was alive today, it would be her favorite food because, well, I don't actually know what they had back then, but I think mm, definitely would be pizza. Definitely. And what crazy thing happened in Esther's life? Esther goes on to become the queen of Persia. And what massive thing comes from Esther being queen? Esther goes on to save the entire Jewish nation who were under threat to be killed. And the main message of Esther is this, that you have been called for such a time as this, that the school you go to, the family you're in, where you live, where you're at, where you find yourself, that has all been specifically and purposefully planned by God. That where you are is no mistake, it's not by chance. And so today we're going to look at the overview of the story of Esther from start to finish. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to break that story up and we're going to look at each part in a bit more detail. In our story today, we're going to meet a woman who transformed an entire nation. She saved the lives of thousands of people and we're going to see how she did it. Can anyone guess her name? Come on. You got it. It's none other than Esther. Now before we get carried away with our hero of the day, we need to meet some other crucial characters who also form a part of the story. First up, we have King Xerxes. He was a rich and powerful king and ruled over 127 provinces. In fact, our story begins with a 180-day party thrown by the king himself. Can you just imagine partying it up for 180 days? You would be in a sugar high for the rest of your life. You also probably wouldn't have any teeth left. But let's not get sidetracked. Back to the story. As the party came to an end, King Xerxes summoned his wife, Queen Vashti, to show off her beauty. But she refused. And that, King Xerxes had her banished from the kingdom. Wah! Talk about a temper. Clearly King Xerxes was not the guy to mess with. Sorry Queen Vashti. Sometime after that, King Xerxes decided he needed a new wife, as kings do. And so he held a beauty pageant to find his new queen. Rather cheeky if you ask me. Nevertheless, after a very long process, Esther, our soon-to-be hero, was chosen as queen, an ordinary Jewish girl who loved the Lord. Another important character I'd like you to meet is a man by the name of Haman. Haman was the king's prime minister, if you don't know what a prime minister is, just know that it's someone super important and someone the king trusted. And the last character I'd like to introduce to you is Mordecai. Mordecai was Esther's uncle and he worked just outside the palace gates. Now this guy Haman, the fancy prime minister dude, had a problem with Mordecai. Here's why. Haman had ordered for everyone to bow down to him and Mordecai refused. He's just as cheeky as the king it seems. This enraged Haman. And he was not okay with it. To solve this problem, Haman then went to King Xerxes to ask permission to kill all the Jews. Just keep in mind here that Esther was a Jew, but no one knew. The king gave permission and Haman started planning his mass murder of the Jews. I suppose that's one way to do it, 
I personally would probably have opted for something less messy and gory, but that's just me. When Mordecai heard about this, he dressed in sackcloth and cupped himself in ash. No, this was not the latest fashion trend in ancient Israel. This was just to show his complete despair and heartache after hearing this terrible news. Now Mordecai immediately sent word to Esther that she needed to go to the king and do something about this. Esther reminded Mordecai that anyone who goes to the see the king without being invited and could be put to death without question. Mordecai knows there's no time to waste and to be fearful and he tells Esther that she needs to do this and that maybe she has been called to be queen for a time such as this because her people need her. With that Esther approached the king. I'm sure she was sweating like crazy from all the nerves. He welcomed her by holding out his scepter and to say she was relieved would be an understatement. After that first meeting, Esther arranged a few more meetings with the king and Haman. She eventually exposed Haman and told the king that Haman was plotting to kill her people, the Jews. When King Xerxes heard this, he immediately ordered for Haman to be hung. To cut a long story short, after that, Mordecai was made prime minister and Esther continued to be queen. Esther transformed an entire nation and saved her people. She was obedient and trusted God and realized that the reason for her being queen was so much greater than she had ever imagined. She never once thought that a simple beauty pageant would lead her to saving thousands of people. So guys, here we see an incredible story of God using an imperfect, very ordinary person to fulfill a massive role in saving the entire Jewish nation. So my question to you is this, is will you be like Esther? Will you use your influence for good? Or will you sit back and allow God to use somebody else? Because you see, here's the thing, God will always accomplish what he sets out to do. So that means that God will always get the job done and he will use whoever is willing. And so guys, we get to be a part of God's works, that we get the privilege of being part of God's story. I'm gonna read you a scripture found in Ephesians 2, verses eight to 10, so listen up closely. It goes like this. God saved you by his grace when you believed, when you became a child of God, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Jesus Christ so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Now this scripture might seem like a lot to take in, but what it's telling us is this. It's that we weren't saved by doing any good works. We weren't saved by anything we could do, but we were saved for good works. We were saved so that we could do the good things that Jesus planned for us long ago. So this series is all about this. It's, it's acting with courage and it's stepping out in faith. It's using our influence in the best way that we can. And, and saying, God, God, would you use me? Or, or maybe you're saying, God, can you use me? And, or, or maybe you're thinking, but what do I have that God would even want? Well, I asked some of you guys this question. So let's see what you have to say. Um, to have an influence means that the stuff you do, your behavior, has a certain effect um, on other people. They might mimic you, they might do the same thing as you do. So to have an influence means that you have an impact on other people. To have an influence means that you have the potential to change other people's lives. Um, I have a church environment, um, life built environment, and um, family environment too. I find myself in many, in many different environments. I find myself in the school environments, uh, family environments, um, at church with my friends. Well, I prayed over the soccer team before all of our matches. Yes, yeah, I definitely stood up for change in my family. I wanted to see many of them come to church and, and see um, what I've seen and also have uh, stood up at school. Um, when I had the opportunity to lead in my matric year. Well, I thought that they might think of me as someone who uh, really was genuine about what they wanted to do 
and uh, wanted to also walk out what they're talking. Are you ready for our new memory verse song and dance? It comes from Esther 4 verse 4 and this is what it says. Who knows, perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. This not only applies to Esther, but also to you. I want you to take out the word queen and put you into it. This is what it would say. Who knows, perhaps you were made you for such a time as this. If we put our trust in God, be courageous, and step out in faith. Who knows what God can do with us and we could be part of His story. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Where you live, where you're at, where you go to school. Who you know, what you do, it's all really cool. But it's not just by chance that you're where you are. It's so much bigger. There's a world out there that is what we have. There are lost and broken people everywhere. So step up and step out and make your life count. Let's build His kingdom. Let's make a difference. Let's know our purpose. And let's declare the truth. We've been called for a time such as this. We've been chosen. Just by chance that you're where you are It's so much bigger There's a world out there that is what we have There are lost and broken people everywhere So step up and step out and make your life count Let's build His kingdom Let's make a difference Let's know our purpose And let's declare the truth We've been called Just this, we've been chosen. We don't wanna miss it. We've been called for a time such as this. We've been chosen, and we don't wanna miss it. Let's build His kingdom. Let's make a difference. Let's know our purpose. Let's declare the truth Let's build His kingdom Let's make a difference Let's know our purpose Let's declare the truth We've been called for a time such as this We've been chosen The story of Esther is a very encouraging story. We see how God uses someone like Esther, who was just an ordinary Jewish girl, and she wasn't perfect either, but he used her for the massive role of saving an entire Jewish nation. And do you know why? It's because Esther used her influence. She used her position of queen and was obedient to God. And so my question to us today is, are we using our influence? Or are we kind of just sitting back and, and watching these ungodly things happen, watching bad things happen around us, but we don't actually do anything about it? And so my encouragement to us is that we would use our influence, that we would actually step out in faith, and that we would be obedient. So I'm going to pray for us today that God would give us that strength to step out even when it might be difficult, scary, or we might feel like people might look at us a bit funny. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for stories in the Bible like Esther that we can learn so much from. God, I pray that just like Esther used her influence, God, she used her position for the, for the good of your plans, Jesus, that we too would find ourselves 
in situations where we would step out in faith, we would step out in obedience, and we would be bold and use the influence that you have given us, Jesus. And we thank you for this in your precious name. Amen. Spread your wings and fly for Jesus Like a butterfly in the breeze Stay free and alive for Jesus Like the monkeys in the trees And down by the waterfall You can see giraffes so tall Keep your head up high Try to touch the sky for Jesus Today we've looked at a, a few different things and some of you guys may be thinking how do I become someone who's an influencer but that can have godly change on the world and the place that we can start is by first becoming a child of God and some of you may be wondering what that actually means to be a child of God and what a child of God is is someone who follows in the ways that the Bible teaches and if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you've never really, really know without a shadow of a doubt that you are a child of God, then I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And I encourage you that you would go to, up to a leader, that you would go up to a parent, and that you would tell them about the decision that you've made. Because when you tell someone else, things completely change. When you go up and tell someone else, then they can pray with you, they can start a journey with you, and they can become that person that you first told that you want to be a child of God. And they can begin this walk with you. So I want to encourage you guys, if that's you today, then go and speak to a leader, go speak to a parent, go speak to somebody, and let them know what your decision is today.
So that is it. We are done. Week one, Esther, out the way. On to week two next week. Make sure you're there because you're not going to want to miss out a single week of this series because trust me, next week is a banger. You might want to be there for that. Now, it is definitely that time of the Sunday. Sunday, fun day, challenge. Yes, sir. And this week, we've got a bit of a, a doozy. It's one that can be a little bit of a stinky one. So what I'm going to need every single one of you guys to go and do is to get into groups of three or four, somewhere around there. And if you're not in a group like that, then that's perfectly fine. You can do it by yourself. So this week's Sunday Fun Day Challenge is called the Leaning Tower of Shoes. That's right, shoes. Not even shoes, shoes. So what you guys are going to do in your group of three and four is everyone's going to take off their shoes and we need to see who can make the tallest tower with their shoes. Now you're going to stack it on top anywhere you guys like to do this. On top of the table, on top of the floor, on top of somebody's head. I don't mind. I just want to see the biggest tower of shoes. That is correct. So that is this week's Sunday Fun Day Challenge. Please make sure you send in your pictures of your towers because we need to find out who this week's winner of the Sunday Fun Day Challenge is. That's all from me, Shanky. I'll be seeing you guys next week for week two of our Easter series. Check you guys.